the Peppered Corydora, or Corydora Pleiates, also known as the Peppered Cory, the Blue Leopard Cory. Uh, these fish come from South America's Rio de la Plata Basin, uh, which includes countries like Brazil and Argentina, but there are several others as well. They are found in rivers, streams, and small lakes. And an interesting fact that I learned when I was doing some research into these guys, they were actually first discovered by Charles Darwin in the 1830s when he was traveling on the HMS Beagle and one of the first captive bred fish for sale in the aquarium hobby. Uh, they were being bred in Paris, France around 1878. Now, however, these fish are mostly captive bred in Asia or Florida. Peppercory is one of the most common types of crows you're going to find in the hobby. They have a pale tannish colored body with dark, you know, splotches along them. And they have a slight iridescence, though if you get them wild, they have a more pronounced iridescent sheen to their skin. And you know, those black blotches are why they got the name Peppered. These corys are going to get upwards of three inches in length that can live up to about five years, depending on their living conditions. So they're going to want to be kept in groups of at least five and they're going to want plenty of places to hide in your aquarium. So you're not going to want to house these guys in probably anything smaller than a 10 gallon, but I would recommend a 20 just so they have more room to swim and it will bring out different behaviors than being in a smaller box. pH wise, they have probably one of the highest ranges of any fish I have seen. So for those that don't know, when I look up a fish, I go to Google, I type the fish, I put care at the end of it or care guide, and then I open about six, seven, a lot of links and I go on there and I look at the different ranges and I find like an average or a mostly said range uh, for these guys I was finding ranges so they can go down to 5.5 and upwards of 8 in pH most people and the most seen range that I saw was 6.5 to 7 which is what I've always kept my quarries in. I've always kept them in slightly acidic to basic water for water temps, it's another large range I was finding. It was as low as 64 and upwards of 82. Uh, for the ideal range for these, I'm going to say probably 72 to 78. Uh, I keep mine at 76 in a community tank, but I have had to crank the heat up to about 84 uh, when I had some ick in there and the quarry cast survived and they did not have any adverse side effects from that higher temp. Now these guys are an omnivore. Some people assume that they're an algae eater since they're a bottom dweller and they're usually seen, you know, on the bottom of tanks. Um, that is not the case. They're primarily a scavenger fish, so they're going to be going to the bottom of these streams and rivers and looking for bugs and other morsels that they can find. So you're going to want to get these guys something like a Hakari sinking wafer or maybe even an extreme community pellet that will sink to the bottom so that they also have some food on there as well. So they're a catfish, so they're going to, you know, sit on the bottom and look like they're grazing but they're not actually grazing for algae. They're just looking naturally like they would for anything in your substrate that they can eat. Overall, these fish are a super easy community fish. They're going to pretty much go with anything you can put them with that will take the same parameters as the quarry. So you're not going to really have any trouble finding a tank mate. So again, I would stay away from your larger fish because, you know, as long as it can get in the fish's mouth, it can try and eat. Thank you all so much for the support on all the videos. Remember to hit that like button, leave a comment down below. And of course, if you're new here and you enjoyed this, uh, please think about hitting that sub button as well. Thanks again. I will see you in the next video.